started really well, of course. So you can see Carlo has had time with the, with his team and prepared them. Uh, had a good pre-season. Uh, been uh, positive. Had made some good signings, and uh, they're making strides. So uh, for us, it's we know every time we go to Goodison Park, with or without fans, it's going to be uh, a tough game against uh, physically good side, but also some technically uh, very good players. Sometimes you uh, you know Carlo is one of those managers that has been experiencing. He's he's had a career that uh, most of us uh, admire, and he's a he's a guy that you admire because of his personality as well. So. Uh, but it's not about me or him, uh, unfortunately, because uh, if it was me and him on the pitch, I think I'd, I'd have the upper hand now. I'd, I hope so, anyway. Well, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer looking very relaxed there, despite the inevitable pressure that he's under. We've heard from him. Now it's time to hear from you in this week's Friday Fan Forum, where we're focusing on United's trip to Everton with Robbie ready to answer your questions. Don't forget to use the hashtag PLFans to get in touch and send in your questions and videos for Robbie every week and to Tim and Andy as well to answer. Anything you send in could be used across Premier League programming around the world. And first up this week, we've got Babadunde from Nigeria, who has a question about Donny Van the bag. Hi guys, so do you think Donny van der Beek has justified his place in the starting lineup and he should get the start ahead of Pogba and Bruno on Saturday or do you think the three of them can still play together? Mm, has he done enough Donny van der Beek from what you've seen so far? I'm not sure it's a player Manchester United needed, you know, um, I think Real Madrid were linked, um, they got him at a good price Manchester United but I just think it's complicated that area. Um, you've got to you know, look at the recruitment Manchester United had, how many targets um, they went for and they got. I'm not sure Donny van der Beek you know, was the right um, player to sign in those positions, Tim. I don't know. I, he's a good player, but did they need him? Well, at the moment, where does Donny van der Beek play? He doesn't play. I mean, uh, incredible that you spend... You, you, uh, seem, you seemingly mean? struggling to spend uh, uh, a fortune there at Manchester United, but £40 million is quite a fair bit of money. And for, to bring him into your football club and not play him at all, you know, hardly had any minutes. Yeah. Um, I think he's an eight. I think he plays as an eight. You need one yeah. number six, in my opinion. You don't need two number sixes at Manchester United. You need one number six and two number eights. And I think he could play... At the moment, I would leave out Pogba for him because mm. I think Pogba's not doing it in that position. I might play Pogba as a ten. Um, and, I'm, and I would like to say, actually, I, I think it's unfair the stick that Pop, Pop, Paul Pogba gets. Mm. It's unnecessary. They're all as bad as each other at the moment, not mm. just Paul Pogba. So I'll play Fernandes and I'll play Donny van der Beek either side. Give him an opportunity. It's hard to judge him at the moment. He's a fantastic player at Ajax. Can't judge him at Manchester United at the moment because he's only had a cameo role. Mm. Andy, what do you think? Has he got a place at Manchester United in the starting eleven? Yeah, I think he does because I think you look at both the fitness issues of Paul Pogba over the last season and the fact that Bruno Fernandes you, you cannot keep putting this physical load on him I, th I think there was definitely a point towards the end of last season where it felt as if it was too much for him he'd gone from leading one team at Sporting to leading another one at Manchester United mm -hmm. and you know we can talk about and I'm sure we will talk about Solskjaer and wh where he is at the moment and um, how he's doing but the fact is, if they don't have Bruno Fernandes, there's no Champions League for Manchester United last season, last season and this season, and that is absolutely yeah. unquestionable. But a club like that cannot be dumping all the load on one player. It can't be that if Fernandes isn't fit or isn't firing or isn't available, we're stuck. So they did need someone else, I think. OK, next we can hear from George, who's in Uganda, who wants to talk about Manchester United's recent form. What do you make of Manchester United's uh, inconsistency in results and uh, Ole Gunnar's failure to familiarise with his first priority starting 11? Uh, this was associated with poor team selection. And um, do you think this inconsistency is going to cost Ole Gunnar Socha his job? Just for me. It's for you, um, Rob. Um... The inconsistency is key. We've seen when he first come in, you know, when he first got the job, that they were magnificent, went on that unbeaten run. Then they put poor, they never had a good run. And every single time, you know, on a radio show I do, every single time Manchester United lose, it's, every time they get a good result, it's all he's at the wheel, that famous quote from Rio Ferdinand. So something's got to happen, something's got to give. Either they come out and say, listen, all he's our, our guy, we're going to keep him to the end of the season, no matter what the scores are, or... You know, 
it's it's they've got to come out and do something. So this weekend, if they lose to Everton, I can guarantee you it'll be Ollie out. If they win, it'll be Ollie's back, Ollie's at the wheel. Where are they? Is that not the same at every big club? And not only that, the biggest club in the world. You that's lose you lose two games at Manchester United, you're in a desire, you're in a crisis. But that's know? not Liverpool or Man City, is it? It wasn't. I think it's a good point to make in Liverpool because Jurgen Klopp, when he went there, it took time for him to bring Oli success. Oli won more games in his first 100 than um, Jurgen did at Liverpool. Yeah, I, I just think it's such a big... You, Oli's no fool. He knows he's under pressure. He knows the results haven't been good enough. Um, Is it even more so not just about the results, though, Tim, with Manchester United, but the way they're playing? Yeah, I would mm. say so, Jules. I think when... So let's, take, let's go back to Jurgen Klopp. When he came into Liverpool, yes, they wasn't successful straight away, but you could see there was going to be an identity. They see he was building towards something, a playing identity, always on the front foot, out of possession. You knew what they were trying to do. And in possession, they had a clear a clear uh, picture of, of everything and you knew they could move forward and they could it's easier to scout then so they can make additions to the squad at the moment I would be able to scout for Manchester United because I'm not sure how all he wants to play so whether they need Jaden Sancho or do they need him I don't know how are you going to play you're going to play three up top or you're going to play two do they need a number 10 did they need a Jack Greenish I don't know because I can't tell one week to the next, he's playing a different style of football, which is very, very confusing and difficult to understand in the dressing room. The English media went a little bit crazy this week, Andy, because Maurizio Pochettino was featured on TV on Monday Night Football here in, in England, saying he's ready to go back into management. Now, this has got everyone talking about whether or not he's set up to be the next Manchester United manager, but is that fair on Ole Gunnar Solskjaer? Um, I think, as Tim says, you have to live with that if you're Manchester United manager. I mean... You know, there's a huge amount of expectancy and we know he likes to draw on the past and his connections with that and everyone appreciates what he did for Manchester United as a player. Um, but the reality is, at, at the moment, it, it is tough. And, you know, we can talk about, as, as Robbie said, his, his, his record in terms of results in those first 100 games is fairly positive. But the content of those games was not great. There are a lot of scratchy wins in that. And rightly or wrongly, because of what Manchester United did in the first decade plus of the Premier League, people expect something more. They expect something a bit more front foot. Mm. The worry for me, Tim, in midweek in the Champions League was the goal. Mm. You know, there was a corner. And I look at leadership qualities, you know, whether it's on the pitch or in the dugout and... That goal, for me, was as a, as a leader on the pitch yeah. or off the pitch, was totally unacceptable. As a coach, you'd say, you know, one in front, one behind, you know, yeah. Denver Bar. Mm. Uh, but somebody on the pitch, the goalkeeper, the manager, the coaches, it was too late when, um, I think it was M Mike Phelan come out and pointed. Yeah, yeah. Where is the leadership? No, no. For, for me, I wouldn't be able to sit there with my legs crossed watching the thing. I would, I would <laughs> Tim, have been I know screaming exactly from be the like. rooftop. And if they didn't do it... I, I, when they got me in that dressing room, I would have got them both in a headlock. It was no question about that. I would have lose my... Because ultimately, everyone's looking back at the manager. Yep. It's the buck stops with the manager. Yep. Have you organised it? We're all asking questions now. You're asking it now. Did, did you organise it? And if you did, you can see it evolving. As the corner's getting t taken, you're at the side of the pitch and you're making sure yeah. you're up there telling them to organise. One behind, one in front. Yes, they've got to take responsibility in themselves and got to do it on the pitch. But ultimately, it's not their name on the back of the paper. It's not their name who's under pressure. They're still going to be at the football club because they're under contract to be at the football club. Any time they can cut Ollie's contract and say, goodbye, we've had enough of you because of what they're delivering on the pitch. So it's up to the manager to make them respond and do stuff. And you need to scare them into it. So why is the manager running out and no saying, idea. what's going on here? One in front, one behind. Come on. It's also quite telling when Rio well, if he loses his seat and someone's going to sit it, in it. Yeah, well, Rio Ferdinand tweeted after the game as well, saying, I hope someone's going crazy in yeah. that changing no, room. Exactly. As a former captain of the club, he can see that that leadership is missing. But the thing is, what confuses me about it, I think a lot of responsibility does have to go to the players because, as you said, that Denver Bar goal, it's absolute basics. Yeah. You know, any, anyone who's played football at school can, can tell you that. But I think that the problem is we know Solskjaer can set them up defensively. We've seen it yeah. time and again. We've seen it against Paris Saint-Germain, against Manchester City. So there's no doubt he can do that. But it's like Tim saying, if the players aren't responding to that, mm. that's almost far more of an issue, isn't it? Mm. Mm. All right, finally, we've got to move on and hear from Ari, who's an Everton fan, all the way from Australia. Just wanted to get your thoughts on what happens if Everton do lose this game. They'll make it three losses in a row after such a positive start to the season. 
Um, and how do you recover from something like that? And how much of a mental toll does it take on the team? I think Everton is still, even if they lose this game, they're still doing exceptionally well. They've got great recruitment. Um, I think they are above where they were expected to be at this stage in the season where we're seeing so many different results. Liverpool conceding seven, City conceding five home. So even if they lose this game, I think they're still ahead of probably where they are. Tonight. I think you're right. I think it was, it's been a great start. Yeah. Um, to lose two games on a spin is not great. Three, as Harry says there, you know, will be... You know, very disappointing for them. They had a few players out injured. You know, Hamas Rodriguez looks like he might be back fit. I think he's been very important for him this season. But I just think it's, uh, for me, I think it's a full start. I mean, we've been here so many times with Everton. Yes, they brought the players in, but they've had this good start on the back of bringing the players in. And everyone's talking about Champions League, maybe challenging for the title. Let me calm them down. That's not going to happen. Okay. Top six at best for Everton, and that will be a good finish. And they're going in the correct direction. The good news is James Rodriguez is fit for this game. Well, that's Andy, huge, and not just for your fantasy team. <laughs> not just for my fantasy team. I've Almost just been told well. he is fit, which is great, because I haven't transferred him out. Um, but in terms of Everton's depth in their squad, do you think that has been a concern? Is that something that we've seen over the last couple of weeks without Richarlison, because he was suspended, mm. Coleman injured as well? Absolutely. But um, I think we have to bear in mind that Ancelotti's really very much at the beginning of this. He's been mm. at the club for less than a year. And the squad that he inherited is a very, very unbalanced one. Mm. And I think by sensible coaching, sensible decision making, he's got them a lot further than they might have already got. He's done really, really well so far. But we shouldn't take this as the end point. Just because they've got this dazzling new midfield, which is so good to watch with Alain, James... Ducouré, they can't replace Hammers if, he, if he's out. We saw that against Newcastle last weekend. So I think he's going to need a transfer window or two as well if he's really going to get them